Welcome, everybody. It's the weekend. What a weekend. We have got the start of the Scottish League Cup and the European <laughs> Championship <laughs> final. Start the Scottish League. What are you doing? I saw like the Newcastle I'm players. I'm a Dana playing today. The Newcastle players going back to training. <laughs> Everyone's going back to training in the Premier League. And you're like, oh, that seems yeah. it's foolish. It's dirty. Do you know what it, it seems it's like? Dirty. It seems like you're out <laughs> partying and the uh, sun's come up. Yeah. 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 What's Ben White doing? Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. That is outrageous. I really, I mean, really, are they playing today? You can check it, brother man. I'm going to oh, check it right now. He doesn't believe me. It's My the middle goodness. of July. Yeah, they start early. Um, but of course, jokes aside, mm. Spain are playing England in the final of the European Championships tomorrow, eight p.m. They're in playing Queen of the South. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in Berlin's uh, Olympic Stadium, what? or as they call it, the Olympic I'll watch Stadium. Watch the final. Will you? Nah. Uh huh. Yeah. It's big, isn't it? It's big. <laughs> big isn't it? We've been here you before. Can't, yeah. You can't just deflate now. <laughs> yeah. You got to be all pumped up. No, no, I'm not deflating. I was mm. pretending I was a horse ready to right. Uh, eat, to a big, eat the big battle. carrot. <laughs> great... Eat the big UEFA carrot. Yeah. Yeah, that's... Straining that you're a greyhound, straining at the slips. Exactly. That's what you're yeah. exactly yeah. right. Uh, we've already had uh, some uh, political chat from um, uh, Sir Keir Starmer, of course, mm. as he's become prime minister recently. We expect that it should continue. Otherwise, there's a dereliction of mm. duties. But he's already hinted at a bank holiday. We must mark it in some way if England win the most important thing is getting over the line on Sunday <laughs> he, has he if, forgot what sport it is also if the other if it is a UK wide bank holiday yeah. will, would every person in Scotland just go to work diligently yeah. that day think, I'm not marking this I think I would <laughs> would you yeah now I'd, I'd, I'd be, I would say if I was the you know head of any country I'd say hey, look do you want it or do you not want it yeah and just offer it anyway. It's a, it's it's a nice to have, I think. I don't think that's how a bank holiday works, Pete. No, it's so not you know where you are with it. Is that so how you open the shop? Some of your employees are turning up. Political some leaders. Why is it called a goddamn bank holiday? Is that Let's political change that leaders for one in, in certain countries? Let's call it England's Victory Day. Do you people want it or not, Pete? Do, do you want an, do you want an England Victory Day or do you not? Pete, doing mm. the debate to be prime minister. What do you want? <laughs> what do you want? Yeah. If you want to do it, I'll do it. If you yeah. don't want to do it, I won't do it. Yeah. I like one of those reform AI candidates. Well, or as I as a, yeah, as a Ross on my Twitter mentions, who for somehow as at, at that point has infiltrated had, your mute filter, had escaped the mute. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's not anymore. Right. Uh, <laughs> just tweeted to me earlier. Uh, too much politics on your podcast. Oh, yeah, yeah. really? So, yeah. Take it on board, Marcus. Mm. Okay, um, Ross. Uh, well, uh, I would apologise, but I disagree with you. Um, now, <laughs> so to be it, fair, one of our other listeners did reply straight away. Not saying, enough. Ninety-four percent pitbull, six percent politics. <laughs> this is a bit more accurate. No football. Yeah. Um, well, it, it is unlikely though by going on um, the percentages that England will win the final. We know this because a oh, supercomputer. Oh fuck me! Another supercomputer. A supercomputer has been on the case. Um, having um, simulated. This is ma- this is uh, Doctor Strange stuff. This right. having simulated the match a hundred thousand times, it found that Spain have a fifty four point seven percent chance of winning. I'll take that. Yeah, it's football I mean, manager stuff. Is to what me, it is. that that implies that even the sim- supercomputer isn't really sure. Mm. Can't quite thought, make a decision. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yeah. I, th- I think you probably would take the idea of England having a fifty four. So point. a forty six. What did you say? England have got a forty six point chance. Three. Yeah. Okay. That's probably our chances at penalty shootouts and we still win those. So. I think I think that's probably fair enough, isn't mm. it? That's a big assumption, Pete, that we now just win penalty shootouts. Yeah, yeah we, exactly. we famously lost one in the final. Don't you don't you guys give up? <laughs> no, we're not. We're just we're just Come on. So so interestingly enough, um if you look at the betting markets, mm. they currently have England to win in ninety minutes, which is perhaps slightly different, not to win the trophy overall, but to win in ninety minutes. Okay. They currently set that like, having England at about twenty seven point four percent chance of winning the game in 90 minutes. But Spain are favourites though. There's yeah. no surprise about that because of what they've done in this tournament, winning every game for the first time uh, a, a, a team has done that on the way to uh, the European Championships final. Uh, last time they played each other, uh, of course, was that famous 3-2 win in the Nations League all those years ago when England won there. Harry Winks played in that game. He yeah. did. Ross Barkley did as well. Yeah. Um, Get him back in. Well, only Pickford, Trippier and Get Kane left back. started that game. Yeah. Um, uh, that, that, that started the semi-final against Neville. So six years, that, that's six years ago though. Yeah. What, how do you think about that in terms of a turnaround of personnel? Do you think that's about right or do you think it's quite severe? Uh, I think it's probably about right. I mean, the, 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 the Spain turnaround was, I mean, you had like mm. Sergio Ramos playing that day and so on. So, right. Um, very, very different. Um, Six years is a long time in international football, I think. Isn't well, it? It, I mean, look at England at the last tournament. I mean, how many players aren't there? I mean, we, it was about half and half, wasn't you it? Know, Sterling was a stalwart. You know, yeah, Rashford, yeah. Uh, not in the squad. Yeah. Uh, Harry Maguire is another obvious one as yeah. well. David Pratt. Yeah. David Pratt. Eric, Eric Dyer was in that yeah. game and, and, and has played. He was at the last World Cup as well. Steve Ball was on the bench, wasn't he? 
um, against with with Steve Bold. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Bold and Bold. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, gentlemen, how are we feeling about the final? We've been here before, Jim Campbell. Yeah, well, that genuinely makes a difference, as we've been talking about all week. Because mm-hmm. um, this so, is what we do now. We just get to European Apparently finals. so. I, I, there isn't that sense of... Um, the imposter syndrome isn't quite there, though I do think <laughs> this is a tougher assignment than, than Italy in the last year. I think Spain are a better team than them, as good as Italy were. Um, and I think it's, it is, of course, the biggest test yet of, of Southgate's tenure and the whole project, really, and this, this whole era. And I, I'm not sure, actually, how I feel about how it's going to go, because... Prior to the semi-final, I was like, oh, if we get through, we'll probably get battered by Spain. Mm-hmm. But, well, not battered, but certainly beaten. Um, but the level of the performance was so different that it, it has to give you a bit of pause for thought. And also yeah. as well, that the way England have, we keep saying it managed to find a way to go through. Mm. And then managing is right. That Managing these moments mm-hmm. and managing these challenges, having the experience of being, uh, of, of, you know, being in a final and losing it before is going to be invaluable or is potentially something to use to your advantage. I will be fascinated to see what happens if England go 1-0 up, whenever that may happen. Just give because, us a Luke Shaw moment. Well, but that's Fine. been an issue <laughs> even in this tournament, isn't it? England going 1-0 up and then suddenly the, the, everything yeah. changes mentally. And Southgate himself has said he, he isn't telling the players to sort of sit mm-hmm. back or to sort of try and defend that lead lead in the same way and we've not seen it in a while in the tournament we haven't seen it since the Denmark game so Mm -hmm. perhaps that's been banished perhaps it will come back to haunt us again Mm -hmm. yeah I mean they led against Slovakia in in extra time but I take your point it's it's different isn't it yeah it is different and uh, yeah it's it's definitely um, a tough assignment Um, but England is it is it is it police academy two their first assignment or is it city under siege police academy six it's definitely not six Mission to Moscow? I think up to and including the... <laughs> so I would say, no, nah, because by... Is that... As soon as Steve Gutenberg went, it went yeah, massively down. I think that, he that went, was 2018. He went to Simon Miami <laughs> Beach. Did he? That was his yeah, last one. That's that four, isn't one, it? Think, or five? Yeah, five. Four, five. Okay. okay, right, yeah. Well, maybe we'll take it to the Miami Beach one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do, you not, do you not think, Marcus, that um, both teams have more gears to go through, but... England don't need those extra gears to get through. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like, they don't need to up their kind of commitment level, but they could sneak through by being Englandy. We're being Englandy, guys. Yeah, mate. It's Englandy. Well, I, this is this is the thing that I keep going sort of back and forth is that Spain are a better team. They've they've clicked. We've done all this. Um, England have relied on those moments and it's worked for them. And Southgate talked about those moments. Blah, blah, blah. Like, would those moments be enough against this Spanish yeah. side? If you see what I mean, can they can they find uh, moments of, of joy? Can they find these these inspirational moments? That's the thing for me that I can't quite work out at the moment against Netherlands. What did Andy say straight away? He said the two number tens for England will get joy. The mm. way Netherlands set up, they will do, and we saw that with Foden. Even though he didn't score, but you saw it. It, it was, was a clinic. It, it was an absolute clinic. And of course, the way the game goes, Kuman then shuts the space. He knows Kane's not going to run in behind. Yeah. So he thinks, right, well, we can play a high line, and 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 we can and we can we can sort of match them up if you like and squeeze it. And it worked for the Dutch in that they nullified England. Then Southgate sees that as we all did, and he goes, right, Watkins on and Palmer, and the ball goes through, and we know what happened there. Uh, and that that's fairly basic, really, if you're talking about semi-final, Euro semi-final. I, I wonder if that's going to be the case here. I don't think Spain have an obvious fault. The, the only thing is that Spain do like to press England. Well, they do like to press. They like to play the game in the opposition half. They like to do all that. England often don't respond well to that. The no. new system gives them a little bit more control. And I think the back, the back three will be a back five a lot of the time with the wingers coming forward and all that sort of thing. <clears throat> but... One thing is that Spain, if they do press up, it's on the break. It's all that kind of stuff. Harry Kane will start, but as the game progresses, I think we could see Watkins so, introduced so, a touch earlier maybe than, than last time. Um, well, he's certainly earned the right for that, hasn't he? You'd agree, yeah. Um, I, I think um, if you are going to look at weaknesses in Spain, I would say, and maybe it's slim pickings and maybe you guys don't agree, but I think the goalkeeper's definitely got a mistake in him, for sure. Mm. I think unquestionably... Bukayo Saka is the toughest player that Cucurella would have played against and Cucurella's had a good tournament. Uh, but I, 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 I don't find myself massively convinced by their centre-backs either. Mm. So, which again brings me back to the thing that we talked about ahead of the Netherlands game. Andy made that point which came out to be spot on. The point that some, some other people on the show made was that um, can we find someone who's not occupy their centre-backs and really rough them up and give them something? And, and we talked about the idea. 
you can batter them and bruise them and get them weak and then you can introduce Watkins it can have joy uh, why'd I you start with Tony then I definitely think <laughs> okay. well, I think he's got options uh, Marcus is spot on he will start with Kane yeah I, I felt against Netherlands the, the moves broke down far too often when they came to Kane it wasn't sticking to him. England's attack is slow, and that's the thing. The Spain, mm. the Spain team is quick, and you've got Rodri in front of that back line. I think you have England to go around Rodri, quicker. don't you? Just keep it well, to the wings. Yeah, maybe, but I wonder if I wonder if they'll ask Bellingham to kind of try and do a bit of a job on Rodri. Yeah. Mm. I, I, I think for that reason as well, it'll be interesting to see if Luke Shaw starts, because you you are going to need that width in a way that you, you haven't quite so dramatically before. The current understanding mm. is that he um, he will... Start hmm. and, and I think because Trippier got a, a bit of a groin injury in Southgate right. didn't take chances. Although with as we spoke about yesterday, um, Lamine Yamal's crossing likes to cut in on on his on his better foot and whip those balls in. Actually, Trippier might be better off trying to to to, to stop that. Although or, or, although you still got Gay there. I mean, again, mm -hmm. we talked about you know you might have to double up on these wingers. I think it's better for Lamine Yamal to learn a very valuable life lesson about failure on Sunday. <laughs> I, I think, think it's so. the best for his career for yep. Spain to lose. Well, like you said earlier before we came in, Jim, even though he's is he seventeen years old today? He's a birthday today, isn't he? That's right. Yeah, tomorrow. Maybe. Same as mine. Um, he, um, as you were saying, Jimmy, should yeah. basically have a kick in. Just give yeah. him a kick. Yeah, in. yeah, yeah. Mm. Give him an absolute hammer in. Uh, so he's learned a lesson about what senior men's football's all about. He's not Life even in comes FIFA at your yet. Fast kid. Is he not at FIFA? He's yet? not allowed. To, he's not allowed into FIFA because you need permission from the parents. Uh, well, they that's they've said that's, no. That's not been negotiated yet. So they said yes. Um, you, we will allow you to be bathed by Lionel Messi. But we will not allow you to be in a video game. <laughs> he can be added to AFC uh, on Sunday, I believe. That's the first time right. he can sort of uh, legally, so, so, legally so, be in there. So what's interesting is the idea of um, you know, you're right about Spain. Everything you said there's right, and they've been a good team, and they've probably been the best team in the tournament, and and. Their weapons are, for me, the clearest weapons they've got. Are the, this element of control with Rodri and Ruiz in the middle of the park, and then Yamal and Nico Williams in mm. wide areas. Obviously, if you look at like the heat map for Nico Williams, even against France, who you know aren't without their mm -hmm. qualities, he's so high up the pitch. That's right. Yeah. So high up, doesn't really want to do that much defending. Cucurella has done well to support him. Carver how behind your man on the other side is super experienced and mm -hmm. canny. You know, we saw that literally with him getting sent off at a, at a mm -hmm. crucial time. I wonder if there's an opportunity to actually ask questions. If you look, at, I, I just can't stop thinking about that Saka versus Kukurea matchup. Well, they, they have to manage to get Saka on there, but my, they've got my, a pin him back. My, my, my worry would be that, that England are so pinned back that they, they, they. I don't know if it'll go like that as much. Well, I, 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 I sincerely hope not. Spain are always the side that I don't want England to face because. They they press high and England traditionally have not been able to deal with that kind of mm. high press and Spain do it better than the vast majority of nations, so th there is the concern there. But with a with the back three and and the, and the wing backs, I think that that does give a bit more protection. But you don't want it to be everyone's camped out. Now we're boring um, to the, death. Yeah, well, but, <laughs> how slow we play? Spain might know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> what, what a fucking sport is this? Yeah. We got, what's going on? Exactly. It's like John Stones to Val Vegas. What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is not what's supposed to happen. But, well, and it's interesting. There are cameras here. Yeah. People can see this. Rod Rodri People want to be entertained. Rodri yeah. just going to, to, to Bellingham. So I can have the ball as long as I want. Yeah, as long as you want. As long as you want. <laughs> oh dear. But like, yes. like when you try and choose a record list to do on Spotify. Yeah. There's so much. I don't know what to do. There's so mm, much choice. Yeah. I don't know what to listen to. And, and they and you end up not doing anything. And Rodri exactly. won't make a pass. He won't know what to do. He just put it out of play. <laughs> yeah. That's what will happen. Seriously though, can Saka push Kukurea back? Yeah. Push him mm. right back. Because I don't know if he'll get an awful lot of help. And I don't think also you talk you talk there about Gay helping out. Um, in the, in the wide areas that's obviously much easier when you're playing free at the back against a lone striker mm -hmm. yeah, you can double up out wide occasionally and Gay can go over there and help out whoever it is playing on the left it's not as easy to do that with uh, with a back four and it's not as easy to do that when you've got one of them with a busted nose and the other one who you know, he's you know, a good player but I don't think they're, they're stand out mm -hmm. it's not that like you're going up against Sergio Ramos you know mm -hmm. what I mean who's yep. got every trick in the book and has done it all seen it all I think there's, there's a potential bit of joy there for England if they can get on the front foot and if they can trust themselves. Mm -hmm. The thing that encourages me in that midfield area, because, I mean, look, Rodri is one of the world's best players. Make no bones about that. But the thing that's interesting in that area is that's probably where England's strength is. Yeah. You know, Bellingham and Foden in that new yeah. system. Rice will be looking to put right a below par game in the semi. I, I'm Maynou not, doesn't fear anything. Maynou is, was fantastic. Mm. I'm not saying that anyone can usurp Rodri as, as a standout midfield player in this tournament, maybe even. Um, people were hoping Cruz might have done it. He wasn't able to do it. 
But if someone can do it, it might be one of those England players because they've been brilliant. Yeah, I think I think Mainu needs to have a good game again. He's been brilliant in this tournament. Mainu though, and, and what was really good to see in the game against Netherlands is the England players are now trusting him a bit more. There were times in some of the previous games, Slovakia in particular, where they would see Mainu open and they wouldn't make the pass because he he may have soon come under a bit of pressure mm. yeah. and he received the ball and they went very, very safe. Whereas they now realise that Mainu can turn beautifully, he can beat his man. Yeah. Or he can also play a nice, crisp, short pass as well. If you're, well, he's good in the tackle as well. Exactly. So if, if, you know, so he, much. He, if he does lose the ball, he might recover it. Yeah, if, 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 if I was on the Spain team, I would be looking to close Mainu down at every yeah. single possible opportunity and make England sort of start to play the ball long. And if England do that... We saw Harry Kane against Serbia be a nice outlet, actually. You don't want the game to, to, to pan out like that, but there, there inevitably will be um, uh, hopefully short periods of the game where that is the case. But Kane hasn't really looked at the races, as we know. So uh, you expect Spain to, to, to squeeze the play. But if England can get Bellingham and Foden on the ball, there's potentially a bit of room there if Spain are pushing mm. up high. It's just they've just got to be quicker. Essentially, in the, yeah. In the, in the breaks it, it, with the transitions and all that. Absolutely. And uh, can England play their own game is is the really big question here, isn't it? It's interesting that, that you mentioned, <laughs> yeah, that you, that you mentioned um, uh, doing things more quickly because I think in the in the last two games they've been a lot better at this. Saka tends to get doubled up on a lot, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. and obviously that means there's space somewhere. But England have been so slow yeah. that there's never been any opportunity to use it. But they have been better at that in the last two uh-huh. games, and that that could be absolutely key here. They did, they are going to have to p- play at a higher pace against Spain than they oh, have done against anyone so far. This this has got to be a step up. And but but Luke's point is an interesting one about Saka and Kukurea is. You know, the, the fear is England just get pinned back and don't ever get to have a challenge of that. It's unlikely that's going to be the case for the mm. entire game. Yeah. And you just need a moment, as we've talked about. And, and if you can get Saka one on one with Kukurea, I think that is exactly what England wants. We've got any also, vouchers left as well. Well, get a voucher out, mm. go to the back of the paper on the morning. That would be nice. Be Look, I think it's not just the left back position because I do think Kukurea has been brilliant. He has. I think it's, I do think it's a centre back position as well. Mm. You, when, when, if you think about it this way, they're going to be up against Le Normand and Laporte, right? Laporte plays in the Saudi Pro League, but that's a fact, right? He's he's um, he's not have going to, he's not going to have been playing at the very highest level uh, for his club side for a wee while now. And Le Normand plays for Sociedad, you know, decent if unspectacular Spanish side. Mm-hmm. But I can't remember the last time Spain were playing with someone who wasn't, you know, playing for Real Madrid or whatever yeah. in that but position. Those you know. two have played together for Spain a fair bit, though. Sure, so it is a, but, it, it's but it's a... not. But it's not. You're not looking at it and going, "Wow." Most, put it in perspective. I know this isn't everything, but put it in perspective. Most people going into this game as England fans are going to go, "I've never heard of Robin Lenormand before. I've literally never heard of him." They weren't saying that when Sergio Ramos was playing. Sure, but I'm, so I'm so, not sure how that well, I, I, matters on the I, pitch. I think I think as Makes a pair, it easier for us in the stands. I talking think yeah, nonsense. True, that's <laughs> true. I think as a pair. They are worse than Van Dyke and De Vrij. Well, they're also both French, which I don't think would be allowed. <laughs> <laughs> That's the real key point yeah. here. That's the takeaway here. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, I we, think, can we look into that? There's got to be a voucher for yeah, that, surely. Exactly. <laughs> Imagine that after the game, England lose. But uh, actually, if you look at uh, yeah. Rule <laughs> yeah, 37, yeah. and oh, uh, the, the Boffins game, are back, I like them now. And the, the Boffins <laughs> win it for him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Keir Starmer himself. Yeah. <laughs> Lawyer in chief. I'll take it. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. I I take your point, Luke, but they have been pretty decent this tournament, as the results showed. And when they need to be resilient, like against France or or Germany at times, they have been. But they've not faced old ass yet. Yeah. And and I think also, I mean, you know, I don't think Spain, I think Spain are a good side. And I I agree with Jim what he said at the start of this, which is that, you know, I thought England will get through against Netherlands. I wasn't bothered about Netherlands that much. I know it maybe was a little Well, we were all calmer, weren't we? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I thought they'd probably get beat by Spain, right? The only thing that's changed me on that is the first 45 minutes against Netherlands. Because mm-hmm. if England play like that against Spain... Mm-hmm. It's game on. They'll, yeah. th- th- there's no team that could deal with it. And and the only the only caveat to that would be that, of course, England didn't get the goals they should have got. Now, you can't do that against Spain. Yeah. You can't mm. dominate the game for 45 minutes and not score other than a you know, penalty, mm-hmm. which is fortunate. Yeah, they have to make one of those Foden chances or some of the other chances actually count. Because the thing about, which is not talked about enough in football coverage, I don't think, is statistically, if you go ahead in a game, particularly a big game, it's very, very unlikely statistically that it turns over. Mm. Like, particularly if you go two ahead. Yeah. Like the, the statistics, look it up. Yeah, but I've been told it's a really dangerous thing to do. Two nil is a dangerous lead. Yeah, yeah. But but if you look at the statistics, 
in terms of percentage amount of times that teams have gone two 0 ahead in any game and not mm. won, it's mm. really really low. Mm. Yeah. So if you can make it count, then really a lot of the hard work is done. Well, this is it, isn't it? It's will they learn from um, the previous Euros final, and if they find themselves in a position to do that, will they push for the second goal or try and protect the first goal? And Spain mm. have conceded in all of the knockout games, and we've you know we've seen from from England's kind of trials and tribulations in terms of getting to this position in the in the first place that they have a chin now. So mm. it, hopefully. They will be prepared mentally for anything that comes Let, their way and just keep pushing. Um, yeah, it, it, and it, it's interesting that uh, in Spain, the Spanish media are billing this final as Jude Bellingham versus Lamine Yamal, which um, is pretty pointless. Some outlets were critical of Bellingham over there, saying he went completely unnoticed. Now, Bellingham doesn't need too much to motivate himself, Peter. No, we he'll don't make that boiling... into a much bigger thing. Yeah. Especially because he's going to be pumped. He will be pumped, and especially because the actual battle is presumably the cut-in Olympics, which is Saka mm. cutting in, trying to whip the one of the far Olympics. post. The cut-in Olympics and is Lamar, very much Lamar between Lamar yeah. and him, isn't it? Yeah. And, and Williams as well, he likes to cut Yeah, in. and Yamal's kind of, um, his, his, um, he's willing to make a mistake or two. Did you see he was um, seen in the mix zone with a Ninja Turtles mask and someone had to grab it off him? No way. He was, wow. he had a, he was walking through the mix zone with a Ninja Turtle mask. I don't know whether somebody had given it to him or he just mm. got it, brought it out himself. Don't go in the sewers. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, some, down there. but somebody quietly went, "You don't need this fucking fire, this shit yeah, yeah, storm," yeah, and just the... took it off him. And to be fair, he didn't. He didn't put much of a struggle. <laughs> so therefore, Funny. not a real teenage mutant ninja turtle. No, but a teenager still. A though. teenager still. Yeah. yeah. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, it's good to get that clarified. I think. <laughs> mm, but yeah. but with um, you're talking about the cut in Olympics. Um, obviously, Saka is is going to be doing that. But Foden will Foden be can as do well. it as well. Yeah. And this is where you've got to think England going forward. If Saka, again, you talk about him pinning Kukurea back, well, th- even that little thing can open up a bit of room for Foden. Now, obviously, you have <laughs> the presence I thought, of I thought Rodri Kunde, in there. I thought, I thought Kunde got the better of him in the front of the game. In- interesting. Right. But Rod- Rodri's going to be there. But you, Never heard of him. No, but, but, but <laughs> Foden and Rodri will know each other pretty well yeah. for w- what that's worth. And as I say... All right, Phil, how's your baby? <laughs> Foden good, good is he's growing into... He's a Mancunian. Oh, yeah, um, good thanks. He's Mancunian. Uh, fucking banging fucking, mace. Great, He's Mancunian. Fucking great arcade. <laughs> Nick Hewer <laughs> <you are> there. <laughs> uh, all right, mate. How's your baby? A little, oh, little bit better. Has Rodri got a um, Mancunian accent? Uh, like, like sort of a Pablo Zabaleta twang. Yeah. yeah. I don't think so. He's not been there long enough. No, ah, okay. Mm. I thought we're, we're digressing. Yeah. You carry on. A couple more years, he'll be like Mark E. Smith. I'm just yeah. trying to say Foden might do something. Good. Yeah. <laughs> All agreed. Mad, mad for a minute. What's the next point? <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, Foden, I think, you know, we, we say he's grown into the tournament. I honestly think the final, we're going to see the best of him. That That is my mm. sincere hope. I think, I think with what Bellingham has been doing, I think it will be another... Um, Bellingham type performance where he may well pull something out, but he's 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 in more battle mode. If you see what yeah, I mean, and 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 it, and it is. It's not said enough that Bellingham, Jude Bellingham, and Phil Foden is two number tens. Yeah. Really, it's fucking money. Yeah. It is money. <laughs> it is it's so just so. And, and, and you have to remember, Spain aren't going to be happy with that. No, they, no. they're going to play both of them. Yeah, they're not going to be happy with that. They, they, Spain know Bellingham very well, mm. and they know what he's capable of. Yeah, yeah. not particularly in knockout stages of big competitions, yeah. but. <laughs> Generally speaking, Bellingham. We were talking about the, Premier, the Champions League, the Premier League Player of the Year, mm. and La Liga Player of the Year. Are both playing number ten for England? Yeah, in the mm. final of the Euros. Tasty. It's great. It's money, mate. And this and this and this change of formation. You should is, be way more confident. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the change of formation is obviously designed to get the best out of, in particular, those two, but 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 to give a bit of defensive security and so on. It will be the th- they will play that system, and it will be the third time in this tournament they have done, mm. and they've improved every time. Yeah, and this is it, and. England, you know, it, 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 Harry Kane is still England's greatest ever goal scorer. He has scored three goals this tournament. He's, he's joint top scorer with about, I don't know, 18 other players. Yeah. So I think he should start the game. I think he's still working himself back into fitness as well. If, we're, if I'm going to yeah. be as, as positive as I can possibly be, mm-hmm. I, I think there is, there is, it's entirely possible that Kane will be better in this game. Mm. Are we going to see um, Charlie Kane celebrating in the stands like we I did against so. Sutherland? Yeah, really why did the camera so. cut to him? Because he's his brother. I know he's his brother. Well, but that's what? why. Literally why. But, but think he looks the... just like a lookalike, doesn't he? He looks like a crap lookalike. It works on... Brother. Yeah, and some people maybe watching are not aware he's his brother. Think, oh, think, that guy looks like Kane. Think of the process, though. The director's at the side of the camera. Can you find, Harry, uh, find you Charlie find Kane? Harry. Or maybe they <laughs> just Charlie happened Kane. to spot him because Charlie was bringing attention towards himself. By possibly. looking like Harry Kane, yeah, yeah maybe. I'm trying yeah. to organise a move somewhere. Yeah. I mean, you got you got a fear for that man. He's he's in his last contract. 
I have to be careful. He's football, isn't he? Yeah, what's he going to do next? What's he going to do next? I, I, like... I have to be careful because if I get thinking, if I get to thinking too much, I start thinking, if England do win the Euros, mm -hmm. am I going to have to fucking see Charlie Kane more often? Am I going to have to hear from Noel Gallagher more often? Because right, Foden yeah. scores. No, Noel Gallagher he, says he's an Ireland it, fan, so don't worry. But, oh yeah, you wait and see if Foden scores the winner in the Euros, yeah. you won't be able to get Gallagher off the fucking talk sport airway. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, He'll I, have his own show. Yeah, I, I, I think we'll be okay. Mm. I'll happily hear from Liam. I was going to say, Liam will deal with yeah, that. Yeah, great. Yeah. <laughs> there was a great Best one man the other day. To do it, it was a great one the other day. Someone, a random person, <laughs> not disrespecting them, had about 22 followers, mm. yeah. tweeted, Who's your favourite Disney princess? Mm. Liam Gallagher reply, Noel Gallagher. <laughs> 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 there you are you don't have to worry about that one yeah. uh, up the other end of the pitch Spain's number nine Alvaro Morata has been declared fit to play the game after the security man slipped and, and bashed into him and that, that, that was that, Charlie Kane in the mask <laughs> coming in a, in a teenage agent, mutant Ninja I can think mask. of a way you can help us Charlie there's no contract negotiation here for England <laughs> yes exactly yeah. could take you out one of their forwards yeah. no, no y you're mal not that oh, <laughs> would you like to go He's deep undercover yeah. <laughs> have so, you got a better back than your brother yeah mm. strap on your boots that's that's right. So yes, Morata will be there, and uh, I, I wonder if he'll be in a, in a feisty mood towards his own supporters because they have a funny yeah. relationship, don't they? They really do. He's. I think he is the only example, really, I can think of of a of a goth footballer <laughs> <laughs> because he's he is just just made of like ennui and like <laughs> misery and pain. It's very French. That's it's De Bruyne, very, though. French, That's De Bruyne. Actually, yeah. he's, he's, he's the, he's De Bruyne's the a bit like that. Yeah. De Bruyne's a bit emo, yeah. Yeah, a little, yeah. Bit, little bit. Um, um, but you think Murata, the, the interesting thing about Morata is that he's obviously had a journey with the Spain, his mm. relationship with the Spanish fans and the Spanish yeah. football establishment, if you like. And we're talking about this because he's being heavily criticised at home and he and his wife have both responded, responded to, to it. it. Yeah. And, and it's a real shame because, you know, if you think about it, he's going into a final been past fit. He's playing alongside two amazing mm. wide, young wide forwards who do mm. a lot of the running and who, you know, it's a dream thing for a centre forward to play with them. He mm. has scored in the tournament as well. Yeah, he's Croatia. Yeah. Uh, early on. Yeah, yeah. He, did, he did score early on. It was a great finish as well, one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, and it looked like he was going to get caught up. It's the best kind of one-on-one -on -one where mm. he's, what, he's miles clear but he gets caught up really quickly but mm. he still scores. Um, but he's playing in front of Rodri and in between Lamine Yamal and Nico Williams. Mm. Like, it should be the best day of his life. Yeah. So mm. I'm hoping he does find the time to enjoy it although not too much. That's right, yeah. I mean, his, his record for Spain is, is not it's too decent, bad scoring-wise. It's, decent, it's yeah. 36 goals in 79 games. It's nearly one in two. And, we, and, we, and we have an experience, we have a, a, a kind of opinion of him because of Chelsea. Yeah, in the English game because of Chelsea which but is it, probably a little bit, little bit detrimental. 72 matches, 24 goals. In in a bit of a mad Chelsea side, he was one. Of the, yeah. He was one of those Chelsea players. He yeah. was just one of those, Chelsea one of those players. kind of cursed Chelsea. He's strikers, they've right? ruined much worse players. I think he, it's difficult <laughs> for um, Morata because he's sort of the figurehead of the generation after Fernando Torres and David Villa and these really really exciting like strikers mm -hmm. and essentially the best generation of players Spain have ever had. And I think it's just a bit unlucky well, to yeah. be inevitably compared. Yeah, I mean, he came into the Spain side in 2014. You know, after the yeah. incredible run, as, as, you, as you say. I think also as well with Morata, he's never really stayed around a, a, a club too long. He's, he's, he's been, you know, he's played for huge clubs, but he's been there a couple of seasons. Mm. And he's never really quite settled. And I think, again, in Spain, where they, they have obviously different um, footballing philosophies and so on, I think, does, does this guy really fit? But, you know, I mean, he scored in um, the, the, the semi-finals last time against Italy where they, they were unlucky to be edged on penalties. But he's been an ever-present in their side and he's there and he's an, an important player and England are going to have to be wary of him because all the talk is about the wide lads but, the, but, but Morata still poses a threat. But one England player who I don't think we've mentioned him uh, really uh, throughout Tom the Heaton. tournament is we've definitely mentioned him uh, is John Stones and actually mm. Stones has marshaled that defence pretty yeah. well he's the leader back there and England have been pretty good defensively one has to say yeah. um, even though you know they've had a lot of help from from deep um, from midfielders playing deep and whatnot but we've talked about Gay rightly so because he came into the side um, he was injured uh, we've mentioned Konza who, who who came in for, for Gay and, and rightly so we've talked about the wing backs we've mentioned Carl Walker a little bit saying we not been brilliant but still he's yeah. got that pace I mean, he, and, he and Walker had that moment in the <clears throat> Slovakia game didn't they where they had a little bit of a misunderstanding and the, there was that shot from diff distance but oh, since yeah. then actually yeah. he's been, been think, really really solid yeah and Stones is, is, is unbelievably experienced and yeah. unlucky with the Switzerland goal as well yeah a little bit yeah yeah okay so the, the Switzerland goal was maybe on another day he gets a, 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 a firmer um, foot I don't think that. you can blame him for that well yeah but, but either way I think Stones is going to be hugely important for England as he has been since he came into the side he has been 
um, an ever-present in Gareth Southgate's England. He's going to be have his work cut out with him, marshalling that defence, making sure yeah. everybody's doing everything and all going off. But I, there's, I don't think there's any other England player throughout history I think I'd rather. I mean, you talk about Ferdinand or maybe Campbell or so on, but the intelligence that Stones has, you know, he's he, he's been an absolute titan of England. Yeah, he's been great. Um, and I think it's also fairly... Um, impressive that he's been able to do that alongside you wonder whether Carl Walker might be on the turn mm. uh, in terms of his age Stones is probably the peak of his career now Walker has old. flirted with the idea of, of quitting international football I know he has and possibly after this tournament he may well do and I think that, I think it's actually been benefit. speaking of you know the formation change being beneficial for Bellingham and Foden I think it's been beneficial for Walker as well well Walker's great on that right side of the exactly. three we've exactly. seen him before there's less asked of him as well exactly yeah um, but he still has that pace He'll yeah. probably still be that Which quick when he's less, 40. And, he's, and it, conversely, is therefore more effective. Yeah, I mean, if, and if Williams is going to go down that flank, you know, again, who better to step over in that position than, than, than Carl Walker? Uh, yeah, what's, what's really interesting in this head of this game is if you look at the Optus stats, there's not actually an awful lot between the teams. Like the underlying data, which I was criticising yesterday, as a, you know, partly as a joke, is... is, is, um, is oh, was that a joke? It's quite... <laughs> I don't, I don't do a lot of them. Mm. It's actually quite similar. Like if you look at like the shots per game mm. and the kind of things like dribbles per game, they're all it's not a point one of a, of a of a of a shot in it kind of thing. It's very very um very very um narrow. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe there's a tendency to perhaps overrate Spain and underrate England because we're English and mm. because of the group stage. And also mm. the weight of history well, yeah. <laughs> on our souls. But it's not that long ago. If you go to, if you go back fifteen years, that weight of history was on Spain. Yeah, they were underachievers. Yeah, yeah well, I mean, it's still amount. on England, but underachievers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was England and yeah. Spain. We were in I that think, fucking terrible bath together. Well, yeah, <laughs> there's, there's probably a sense in Spain that this is maybe a little bit ahead of schedule, given the youth of some of the players oh, yeah. in the yeah. team. Whereas in England, it feels like okay, this is you know a, a pleasant surprise based on how the the, the group stage was, but really you know, where we sort of hoped and expected to be going into the tournament as favourites. So th there's an interesting psychological difference there. Mm. There is, yeah. Uh, one thing we have seen at this tournament is uh, food banter. Mm. And that's the best kind of banter in yeah, pizza, wouldn't exactly. you? Yeah. Awesome. Uh, yeah. the, the Albanian fans... Uh, Pushed the bar very, very high indeed when they were snapping spaghetti in front of the Italians. That was, that, to be fair, that was wholesome. Good. Mm. Whole wheat and wholesome. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Pre boiled spaghetti, I should say. Mm, yeah. Much easier to do it that way. Yeah. Uh, now, we haven't really seen rival fans challenging England's cuisine because perhaps it's maybe not well known on the world stage. The closest we've seen are Danish fans chanting, You can stick your fucking tea bag up your ass. Appreciate it. I mean always, that that's always... a, that's not gonna that, that will burn you, but also well, again, pre pre um uh, yeah, before uh, right. put it in the cup. Oh, I? that would just absorb everything wouldn't yeah. it It'd be oh, desiccate, desiccate you wouldn't it it would, it would dry you out calcify could, yeah. could yeah. we get Jamie Oliver on pre-match making a paella with a bit of chorizo because we knew that caused a stink in Spain when he right, did it yeah. Yeah. or Pete with a pepperami yeah oh, I could Pete. make a little paella, paella pepperami Pete, we need to send you to Berlin just yeah. before kick if you run on the pitch chopping up a pepperami into a paella <laughs> Spanish players will lose their heads lose their heads and yeah. psychologically <laughs> game's won yeah it's not even paella this isn't even paella it's a super noodles <laughs> <laughs> do, do you yeah. not think you, that you call the pepperami um, chorizo throughout <laughs> delicious <laughs> I've got delicious you chorizo, call it chorizo. Yeah. And you, yeah. call, uh, you call it locally sourced chorizo <laughs> <laughs> organic locally artisanal sourced. chorizo yeah. <laughs> it's a bit of an animal yeah, yeah. Uh, I would say I mean literally it is but, but you know, um, you know, you know, <laughs> I've just got the it's yeah, a bit uh, of an animal yeah oh god yeah. Well, it does sound like they're protesting too hard yeah, yeah. a bit of it's animal <laughs> <laughs> You know the story of when, like, Christopher Columbus first hit America or something? Or, oh, or some explorer, we remember it well. Mm. Some so, so explorer first hit yeah. some shores of America, and all the, all, the, all the indigenous people, but there were coca, coca leaves everywhere. Yeah. Like, in their ears, in mm. their mouths, everything. Mm. Okay. Like, I would love to see you lead the team out yeah. against Spain with a pepper army coming out of every, every orifice. Every orifice going. Yeah. Armpits. Is, would like that be the new collection. flare up the arse? Could I be. think so. I else. think we could do with like a big, a big meaty and explosion. And, and, and a hat as well. <laughs> in Leicester Square. <laughs> like a sort of balloon, a a meat balloon hat. hat style. Yeah. 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 It has to be in Berlin armies. because the final was in London last time so you've got to get out there and do this. Well, how can we upset the Danish like that? I'm actually thinking about it. The, the, the Danish. 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 The Spanish. Well, they started this. Yeah, yeah. That's they were the ones with the teabag thing. we got to take them out first and then we move on to the next level. I think the Danes are the least of our 
our, our worries at the moment. Anyway, the, the the Danish is a lovely accompaniment to a cup of tea. So they're having a laugh true. there, aren't they? They are. That indeed. is true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I gone. like that you realise what it's a bit of an animal meant live yeah. on the show. I Wild. haven't figured that out. No, no. really? No, no, Luke, you haven't figured that you haven't out. Figured that's, that's, that's that out. Double, do you not get the double meaning? No, I do now. Do now. <laughs> Don't blame me, guys. Right. I'm not blaming tweet, you. I'm saying tweet, that you didn't get uh, it. Football Ramble, if you didn't understand yeah. uh, the double meaning of the Pepper Army uh, <laughs> slogan from about 20 years ago, it's a bit of an animal. final preview. If we can get this anyone, is what we're doing. Look, if we can get anyone who works for Pepper Army to confirm or deny yeah. whether it was intentional, that would also be great. Yeah. Exactly. And yeah. send us some Right, so if you just stop the show now, right? <laughs> yeah. That's the main bit. Right? That's the main bit done. Right? Oh, dear My me. God. <laughs> so, yeah, so uh, there's a tactical breakdown. We'll be back on Monday. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 you know, I, I, I think. Are you a bit worried, Marcus? I, I, I need to, because every. What's the, what's I, the bellwether, I, what's I the bellwether do, presenter? Yeah, because I didn't do, like, post, any post um, mm. England rambles, I don't think. Actually, I did. I was drunk. Um, but uh, I would say that uh, the, the, all of them that I've kind of listened to, I've been waiting for the show to come out because I need you to tell me how I'm feeling about the football, yeah. how yeah. I'm feeling about England. So right. I, I want you to feel a bit more confident about things because I want to feel a bit more confident about things. And are you more confident than you were going into the Italy game yes. in 2020? Yeah, well, I am. Ooh. Oddly. Okay. Um, are you? Yeah. I... I, I... Gareth Southgate has, I think, has been a great England manager, as, as everybody knows that. This tournament, it's been strange. We wondered what was going on, but we're here. Mm. The, 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 I've keep talking about the, 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 progress, the progression that, that has been made under Southgate, and I often say he's punched through this ceiling. There's a lot of mm. ceilings with holes in, the, in, in them since Southgate has been England manager. And we can go through them all, but you know them all. You know, getting past semi final, reaching a final, la la la. Mm. The one thing, the, well, the two things. That, that are left to do and he can kill two birds with one stone here with a victory in that final it is the trophy and it is beating a side that everyone would agree is better than, than mm. England everyone always says and rightly so to an extent when England come up against a good side or a better side potentially a better side like Croatia in that, in that World Cup Italy in, in the final uh, France in, in the mm. World Cup England come unstuck. They, they they just can't get past that side who's who's of equal quality or better. I would I would say Germany in the in the Euros last time, but who cares? The the the, the facts remain. Spain are a better side than England, as we've seen in this tournament. So there's that challenge, and of course it happens to be in the final. These two things are packaged together now because it's the final, and it is the last thing that Southgate needs to do to really say I've done it. And I've done it, and now England have done it, and future generations. And I just think it's such a momentous opportunity. Mm. And, I, and, I, and, I, and I think we might do it. It was his mission statement, wasn't it? When he took over at England, mm. he said, what is it about us that means we, we keep failing in the same way? And he, he talked a lot about wanting to get England into a position mm. where they can win a major trophy. And obviously, yeah. the approaches that were taken before were all wrong. And there were a lot of different reasons mm -hmm. for that. And there were a lot of different areas that needed to be ad addressed and improved and understood. And he is on the verge, as you say, mm. of, uh, of, of completing that mission. Yeah. And it's exciting. Yeah, absolutely. Oi, we're in the final now. Let's go and win it. Come on, England. Come on, England. When something's good, it's never gone. Thank you for watching a clip from the Football Ramble podcast. Uh, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss an upload. A single upload. Don't miss out on the uploads. The uploads are in.